Located on the shores of Lake Erie, only 30 miles from Cleveland, Ohio, the village of Fairport Harbor is a quaint lakefront village with rich history and exciting future. Our small village, home to just over 3,000 residents, is made up of third, fourth, and fifth generation families, many of whom immigrated from the area of Hungary, Finland, and Slovenia. I came from Finland as I was, when I was a little girl, nine years old. Uh, we settled in Fairport, and uh, we came from Isokura, Finland, and when I came, I did not know any English at all. Our churches, organizations, and culture still reflect this ethnic mix today, and our Veterans Park plays tribute to not only our ethnic heritage, but also to those residents who have fought for our country. Fairport Harbor is a town with so much potential. We love all the family-friendly activities like the Mardi Gras parade, the fireworks, the Grinch comes to town every year, and it is, you couldn't imagine a better place to have kids, and it's the closest-knit community that I personally have ever um, encountered. The Finnish word sisu is the perfect word to describe our village. Sisu is a concept meaning determination, grit, bravery, and resilience. Fairport still keeps trying to um, improve for, so they don't give up. They keep on going and try to make Fairport into a wonderful place to be. Over the last 50 years, our village has had to overcome quite a lot. During the early 1800s, Fairport Harbor was a thriving community. The location at the mouth of the Grand River helped to create a booming port. The diamond alkali plant was formed in 1912 and employed several thousand people from Fairport and the surrounding communities. There were grocery stores in every neighborhood, a hotel, bars, diners, banks, and the popular Lyric Theater, which still stands today. However, it's been unused since 1960 when things began to drastically change in Fairport Harbor. The diamond alkali plant merged in 1967 with the Shamrock Oil and Gas Corporation. The merger was costly to Fairport and the plant completely stopped operation in 1976. With the closing of the Diamond, many residents moved out of Fairport to find work elsewhere. The once booming storefronts began to close and the downtown buildings were either transformed into apartments or simply sat empty. Our school district, who once benefited from the large tax revenue of the Diamond, was faced with new financial struggles. During the 70s and 80s, the diamond plant structures were torn down and the expansive lakefront property became the largest brownfield in the United States. In the early 2000s, the site was awarded millions of dollars in grant funds to clean up the land and make it usable again. But that has been a slow and complicated process. Fairport Harbor has also struggled to overcome the history of the diamond and the property values have remained low for many years. Most of our storefronts, as well as the theater, have remained mostly empty. But there is that mystical, almost magical concept called Sisu. And the village of Fairport Harbor, rooted deep in ethnic heritages, has found a way to remain resilient and persevere. It's on the way back because there was a downturn when the diamond left and people, a lot of people were very upset and very depressed and lost jobs and had to go elsewhere and now, you know, Fairport's being built back up because everybody sticks together, that stick to uh, and persistence and support for each other um, is bringing it back. Within the past few years, a resurgence of energy has begun to invigorate our community. Abandoned storefronts are now near capacity as business owners have begun to see the potential Fairport can offer. Excitement is building for our historic waterfront town's recovery. This is a very exciting time for Fairport. There's a lot of change. There's some really awesome people behind um, the momentum that's happening here. Lake Metro Parks now maintains Fairport's beautiful beach. What I love about Fairport is that our family has a chance to go out on Lake Erie and use our boat. It's a nice, small, friendly town, and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. 
The charming downtown with locally owned businesses and restaurants lining the streets is also home to the only lakefront restaurant in Lake County. We have two historic lighthouses, two museums, a beautiful beachfront boardwalk, an eight lane bowling alley, which we jokingly refer to as the largest bowling alley in Fairport, and several boat marinas. Interest in moving to Fairport Harbor is growing. Some of the homes have been turned into weekly or weekend rentals in order to provide visitors with accommodations during their time in Fairport Harbor. Golf carts are the main mode of transportation around our village because how else should one travel around a beach town? And one of our residents recently purchased the long empty Lyric Theater and has plans to restore it to its former glory. We have a uh, great vision to try to take this theater back to its glory. Uh, it's a labor of love. A Fairport's unique. We have this energetic uh, council people that are taking over the mayor and they see it as a, uh, a destination, not just a place to uh, live. And we have so much potential with the river and the lake being in close proximity. The folklore surrounding Fairport Harbor also adds to interest in our village. The lighthouse in town is known for being haunted by a ghost cat named Sentinel. Over the years, the curators of the lighthouse would swear they saw the ghost of the cat running and jumping through the lighthouse. It remained just a ghost story until 1980 when they actually found a mummified cat in the walls of the lighthouse during some renovation work. The lighthouse, located on the western break wall, is now privately owned by a woman from Virginia. She purchased the lighthouse and renovated the inside and the outside of it. She opens her vacation home one day a year on its birthday for visitors to make the trek out over the break wall rocks to visit the lighthouse in person. The village of Fairport Harbor would make an amazing backdrop for the HGTV team. We are small, covering only one square mile. We have easy access to the freeway that leads to the city of Cleveland only 25 minutes away. We have a rich history with deep ethnic roots. We have historic architecture throughout our village with tons of potential. The Grand River and Lake Erie surround the village on three sides, making it a location that most would drive by unless there was a reason for visiting. This is the vision for Fairport Harbor. We want visitors to have a reason to drive in, not drive by our little village, by becoming a year-round destination. After all, we already know that life is better in a beach town, and now we want to share it with the world. Yeah, my husband and I moved to Fairport a couple years ago and we thought that we would never find a house here. We wanted to live here. We're like, it's such a small town. There's no way that the right house is going to be on the market at the right time. And we found it. And we are so thankful and grateful and lucky that the whole process worked out. What I remember most about Fairport is when I was a little girl and I was able to walk to my grandfather's store, which was on the corner of Vine and Independence Street. Um, he, was, he had a great grocery store. Everybody went there. They loved him. In fact, we still have our grandparents' house to this day. We haven't left, it hasn't left the family. All the places in Northeast Ohio, Fairport Harbor, Harbor is a true gem. See, I grew up in Fairport Harbor, Ohio. This is my hometown. Many of the homes in Fairport are over a hundred years old. My house was built in 1957 and it's one of the younger ones, but um, the architecture is just amazing and people are really trying to preserve the history here. And my name is Heidi. <laughs> I am a born and raised Fairporter. Uh, my dad is a born and raised Fairporter, as were his parents. My grandmother owned uh, where our current ice cream store is. She owned the building and that was a restaurant with boarding rooms above it. And my mom came to Fairport in the late 40s and rented a room from her, met my dad, and the rest was history. So they lived in Fairport their whole life, as have I, and my kids went through the school, and so there are many things that I love about the town. The history of it, of course, is important to me, but more so the richness of the history, I'm excited about the growth of the future. It's a very exciting time to be in Fairport. My name is Debbie, and I've uh, lived in Fairport now for about uh, six years. 
and what I love about Fairport is the small town feel that it has and the people in it and um, the waterfront. I was drawn to the water and it... Hi, I, we're the Backnick family. We love living in Fairport Harbor. We lived here for 11 years. We like the beach. We like the community. We think the community has a lot of potential too. It's a great time to be here. And what's your favorite thing, Penelope? Uh, uh, um, the beach. We moved here after I graduated high school after living in the same town for my whole life. So moving was hard initially, but what I noticed when I first got here was that I didn't feel out of place. I, I guess I felt like I'd been here my whole life because everything just came together so nicely. I remember the clock on Costello's flower shop. It was a big illuminated clock in the front above the door. And that's how you knew, if you didn't have to be home when the street lights were on, that's how you knew what time it was and where should you should be. Should you go faster to get home or did you have time to walk a normal pace? That's a huge memory. In fact, when the pizza shop first opened, my husband and I looked a lot of, looked all over to try to find that same, a clock like that so it could be put back up. But we were never able to find one. Um, Fairport Harbor is a com village that is rich in history, heritage of the immigrants who settled here, and we do have some folklore that is so much fun to hear about. First time I experienced Fairport Harbor was in September. It was a birthday trip. My husband and I were exploring. We didn't, we weren't quite ready to go back to work, so we thought we would explore on the lake, and um, we happened to find a location where we decided to have our second home and we fell in love with the place in the early Come down and see our historic town which is well over 200 years old and visit with some of our generations of folks that have lived here. I'm sure you've already heard some of the great memories but we want to make some new great memories so we have another four to eight to ten generations that live here.